Hello and welcome to Tonic Studios. I'm Leo and I'm here today to show you how to put together the terrific toolbox. So we're going to do a very quick make on how to put together your terrific toolbox. Um, as Alison and I said in the reveal video, it is a really quick and simple box to put together. So I'm timing myself here. I'm hoping to get this done in 20 minutes. Let's go. So I'm going to bring in my die set so you can see which dies I have used for each panel. Start off. I have pre-done my layers as you can see. We always say that it is quicker and easier if you are layering up your box to stick your layers on before you assemble it, especially with something like this that has straight sides, there's no curves involved, um, so you don't have to worry about you know it being too stiff to curve or anything like that once you've added your layers on. Get them stuck on while everything is flat. It means everything can dry as well, which uh, makes everything a little bit quicker for you. So, side panels I have two of, which are these panels that you can see here. And then I have the other two, sorry, I should say front and back. Front and back, these are the sides. That makes more sense. Front and back, side panels. So your side panels are this nice big piece here. And we're literally just gonna stick all of these together, nice and easy. So we have our glue tabs on the side of the side panels. That's what we're going with now. So when you're sticking these, just make sure that your lines nicely line up. So you're looking for this score line and this score line to meet. That's going to give you a nice square base then. Make sure you've not got any glue spilling over the edge as well. And you want your cut line to come up to the score line as well. And then we put on the next one. Make sure your glue goes right to the edges of your glue tabs. So again, just making sure that the cut edge nicely meets that score line. Just hold it in place. Got a bit of wiggle time with your wet glue, that's why we always suggest we use wet glue, not tape. If it doesn't quite hit the right place, first time you've got those few moments to wiggle it around if needs be. Okay, on to the next side. And you can already hopefully see that the box is taking shape nice and quickly and also just how big this gift box is. Now this um, sample we're making up for you here, obviously we've used pattern paper. Um, we've gone with our lovely Mulberry Wine paper, which we love and adore and are basically using on pretty much anything we can get our hands on at the moment. But you can really dress this box up any way you want for any occasion. It is all about the box in the die set this time. And the rest is up to you. Okay, last of the sides going in. Yes, pressing that, making sure that is all nicely glued along there. And then we do have these two little tabs just on the top here. And this isn't quite, um, it's not a 90 degree angle, we're not folding it right the way around. It is just a slight slope and that's just to sit just under the edges of your lid. So now that I have both sides in place, I'm going to glue both of those tabs in. So just a little bit of glue on either side. And again, make sure that your cut edge nicely meets your score line. So you've got a good, crisp, clean edge on there. And the same on the other side. Wipe off any excess glue that comes out of the edge, because I may have put a little bit too much on that one. Same then on the other side, so just a little bit of glue on each tab. Pull your cut edge to your score line, like so. Press it for a few seconds. You know, we always do say, be kind to your glue, give it a chance to grab. Don't move on too quickly. So, there is the basis of our box. Now we need to put the base on it. As we all know, it is all about that base. 
So I'm just going to pinch in these glue tabs so they sit nicely. Now for your base, you're going to cut another one of your front or back panels. I'm literally just going to cut off the glue tabs top and bottom. So for this, you can use a guillotine or a trimmer, or you can just use a nice long pair of scissors and literally just cut right the way along the score line, just like so on both sides. They are good for the bin, and then I'm just going to put glue on all of these tabs. And for this, do make sure you go right into the corners of your glue tabs. Those are the areas that tend to lift first. So if you can get those nicely glued down, the project should have that good longevity that you want. I'm going to press my base down and once I'm happy that it is where it needs to be and then I'm going to flip this over and just from the inside press my glue tabs onto the base and if you're comfortable and you're happy that it is where it needs to be you can go on the inside and just press all of your glue tabs down. There we go, that looks nice and crisp. I'm going to actually grab my paper creaser which is the perfect tool for this, just to run right the way along all of your glue tabs on the inside, just to make sure they are all nicely adhered. So that is the base of our box done, I'm going to put that to one side, that can be nicely drying while we move on to the next piece. So we're going to work on the lid, so again I have a couple of different pieces that we need for this. We have this shaped piece here, which is your side panel, so again you need two of those. And you also need the lid piece itself, which is this one here. And I have two of those. And again, I've already got my uh, decoration stuck on here too. Now, I haven't decorated these two yet. Because of the angle of these, you've got these lovely little angled pieces that sit either side of your handle, basically. And I actually found it's easier to put these on after you've put your handle on so you can judge the distance and make sure that you're happy with the arrangement of those panels and where they sit with the handle piece as it is in place. So I'm gonna save that for a second. I haven't quite folded these, so let's quickly do that. Fold along that score line. So that one's gonna be a mountain, this one's going to be a valley. I had to really think about that then. You could probably all hear my brain working at that point. Yes, and then that one's going to be a mountain. Right? Right. Yes. So we're going mountain, valley, mountain. I almost did that the wrong way then. Like so. And these literally just turn around and fit together. No, it is the wrong way. Mountain, mountain, valley. Mountain, mountain, valley. Like that. That's what you want. So this will create a little dip that your handle actually sits into. Hopefully you can see that just in the top of the box there. That's what we're aiming for. Mountain, mountain, valley. So glue on both of your glue tabs. Again, making sure you get it right to your corners. I knew there was a valley involved somewhere. It just didn't have it in quite the right place. Okay, so you can use the score line to help you line this up. I think this is a very neat way of putting two panels together. Half a glue tab on each to make a hole. Of course, this is a Toby box in case you hadn't guessed that already. It's got an interesting opening and a, a different kind of mechanism, so you can guarantee that it's always a Toby design. Okay, so now we have a little set of wings, so um, bear that in mind if you ever need to put some wings on a bird. We have some set in here for you. We're now going to glue the roof piece onto the side panels. I'm going to start with the... I'm being risky actually, I'm starting with the lower glue tab. I probably should have started with the top. Never mind, we'll go with that. I'm sure it'll be fine. So again, make sure you've got that cut line nicely aligned to your score line. And then some glue on the next one. 
and do the same. If you need to, you can tuck the next one down out of the way just while you're pinching that one into place. Okay, then on to the one in the middle. And so as you do both of those, it's probably going to be a little bit easier to do those together. So make sure that your score lines are meeting your creases on here. So you should have nice crisp folds going along. Everything should be meeting, making friends. Okay, get the other side on. So I'm trying to be as kind to my glue as possible here. I'll pinch one while I uh, glue the next. And then that one can go down like that. Looking good so far. Everything is meeting where it should be. So now trying to pinch this one and reach that last glue tab is going to be really awkward, so bear with me. There we go. And then last one going on. Okay, and then same on the other side. I think I might start in the middle this time. So you can choose whichever you feel is easiest if you want to start with the middle two and work down, or with the bottom one and work up, whichever you prefer. Right, let's tuck these out of the way this time. Press that in. So you want to make sure that this um, score line that runs down the centre perfectly meets just in that point. Again, that's going to give you that nice crisp finish that you're looking for. And just going to press those in for a couple more seconds. We definitely need to um, get someone to make us some while the glue dries music <laughs> that we can play. We were saying that would be a good name for a podcast to, about crafting as well, while the glue dries. Yes, it would be. I don't know what you would talk about on such a podcast, <laughs> but... We talk about everything while the glue was drying. Yeah? This is very true. How's your day going? Hope you're having a good crafty day. Okay, moving on. I'm happy they have grabbed, hopefully enough. I'm going to go on the inside this time, so uh, bear with me. I know you probably can't actually see this. I'm just putting some glue on these two glue tabs on this side. And making sure I get it right to the corners. And then press that in. So uh, yeah, which way would you glue this? Would you start at the top and then work your way out or would you start at the edge and work your way in? Let me know, I'm curious. I'm pretty sure we're gonna have like two camps of people mm -hmm. that would do it. One set would do it one way, one set would do it the other. And they both work, so there's no reason to particularly pick one over the other. Probably it's all just down to personal preference. Okay, last two glue tabs. Bit of glue on there and on there. Again, make sure you get right to the edges. You want this box to last a long time. It is a very sturdy little gift box. In fact, it's not even little. It's a very sturdy, big gift box. So, plenty of glue, but not too much right to the edges so that everything is nicely stuck together. These would look adorable or like death under your tree, wouldn't they? Oh, they would. Yeah. Another matching as set. As, as long as you haven't got a dog. Yes, this is very true. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> they might be too interested. Well, I guess it depends what's in them. If it's just a pair of socks, a dog probably wouldn't be that interested. But if you've got something edible in there, then uh, maybe they would be. So, lid is done. Again, I'm going to set that to one side, let that dry, and we're going to move on now to the handle and the mechanism. So, for your handle, you're going to need two of these pieces, which is this bit here. And I've actually used that lovely wood grain deboss pattern for my top of my handle. I've stuck three on. I'm going to stick this last one on once I've decided which way around my handle is going to go. 
you're also going to need two of these long pieces. Now I've got these in two different um, cardstocks here. So I've got plain cardstock and also I've got a lovely patterned paper. You probably will want to back this. You're probably going to want to have two for each side so you don't have the kind of scuffed side showing on the finished box. So basically you're going to back these, but I'm going to back them with patterned paper just to make them look pretty. You're going to need a couple of end caps there. Now I've cut four of these. I may not need four. We'll see how this all comes together. Um, so this is your large hexagon on here and if you want to decorate that then you would use the small hexagon for decoration. Um, and then we are going to need probably some of the most important pieces here. Let me just bring all of these in. So we have these little discs like this. And you've got five of them on one die. Now this is what's going to sort of space out the pieces that your handle um, swings around. I think that's probably the best way that I can put this. Um, so depending on the thickness of your cardstock, how many layers you've done for your handle and so on, you may need to cut more or less of these. So it just says in the instructions to cut them as needed. I've got a couple of stacks pre-glued and then I've got some extras just to see how many I need to make my handle move nice and freely. And then we've got some end caps for those as well. So there's my decorative layer and there's my end caps for those. So all of this together is going to make the mechanism that kind of opens and closes the box. So I'm going to start with the handle piece at the top. So this is a classic you cut to and glue them together and that gives you then your six sides for your handle. Quick look at the time there, I think we're doing pretty well so far. Okay. So glue onto one glue tab first. And glue the two together. Again, just making sure that everything nicely lines up. Let's make sure this cut edge and this score line, it should be smooth when you run a finger along. If you can feel the edge of a cut edge is hanging over too much, and if you've got like a weird like dip where it goes into the score line, then it's too far apart. So uh, there's a lot of touchy-feely that goes on in crafting to make sure that everything is in the right place, and it's a very tactile craft, I like that. Yes, it is. Okay, next glue tab again. Make sure you get your glue to the edges. Pull those together. The most important part as well is to make sure these score lines line up on the edge because if one of them is too far over, then your end caps are not going to sit on nice and flat. Just going to make it difficult for you, basically. And we don't want that, we want this to be nice and easy. Okay, that feels good. So I'm going to again push all of these down. Right now, this part is a little bit complicated. You're going to need to hold this into a nice, I was going to say square hexagon. Hopefully, that makes sense to you so that all of your edges are not square but equal. But we would normally use the word square in that sense. Hopefully you know what I mean. In the correct shape, shall we say. So I'm going to start making sure that one side is nicely lined up. And press that down onto my glue tabs. And then I can kind of pull the rest of them into the right place. She says, okay, again, be kind to your glue. There we go. Give that a couple of seconds to make sure it's grabbed. If you want to, you can also take your precision crease here at this point, press down on those blue tabs. Once you've got the first one of these on, the second one is easier because the shape is kind of locked at that point. It's not moving all over the place. So this time I'm not going to push down my glue tabs quite so far. I want them to be bouncing up slightly, not pressed in, so that I can then press the hexagon onto the top of them. 
glue. If you slightly out for these end pieces, though, you're hiding it with the mechanism on the side. You aren't are. You? you are absolutely. So this handle piece then sits right over the top of this. So yeah, you're not going to notice it. So you can trim off any excess, and nobody will know. Hide your ackings. That's Hide it. your mistakes in this case, but yes. yes. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to hold that. Give it a few seconds, probably a few more. Try to turn it over, press it down onto the surface. Okay, there we go. So like I said, I've already decorated three of these. The way this sits, it sits onto a point in the top. So you will have four sides that are showing so you can decide which are your nicest four sides i think i'm going to go with that one so i'm going to glue my other panel onto this side here you can decorate underneath if you want to just be aware that obviously this does need to sit down into the top of that lid so if you put too many layers on it is going to press everything back up a bit and it may not sit as neatly so I've actually not decorated this top piece here or these last two panels so they can sit nice. I was going to say squarely to get that but It's not a square. It is the most not square box that we've probably had for a while. So uh, do you know what I mean? Okay. That is all nicely glued on there. So that is going to sit just like so. We're not going to do that just yet. We're going to put together these pieces now. I'm going to take one of my piece of pan paper, one of my plain cardstock, and glue the two together. So right the way around the edges, good bit across the middle, line them up. So you could do two of the same, you could do both coloured cardstock for this, both patterned paper. Um, just let me look, have we got any that have been done in just patterned paper? No, I think most people have chosen at least a 216 for the side. But because you are doubling them up, it does add that extra strength. Um, so I think you probably could get away with there. Mm. Two lots of patterned paper for this one. And it's held fairly rigidly against the side of the box as well. It doesn't need to be too tough. Probably at least a 200 though. Let's say a minimum of that. Nope, not that one. Already done that one. This one. Okay, last one going down. I'm just noticing the uh, clock on the studio wall hasn't gone back yet. So it scared me. And I looked up and it said 5 to 12. I was oh, like, oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. That's not good. I think we're going to have to change it manually. I think we are. We actually remember to put a battery in it for the first time in about 18 months, so it actually <laughs> has the correct time, which is nice. Okay, so find your four pattern sides. So this is going to be your top, which means this point needs to go on there, like so. And then this handle comes down the side of the box. So let's get these on. Probably it's easier at this point to actually glue onto this hexagon rather than onto the side panel because you don't want to go too far down here and have glue down the side that may interfere with your mechanism. Okay. Coming together, getting there. It's looking good. Might be slightly over the 20 minutes. Close though. Okay, next one going down. Okay, and just make sure you're nicely lined up with those other edges. You don't want this to be crooked because that's going to affect the mechanism for your finished box. Okay, give that two seconds just over there to uh, think about what it's done and also dry slightly. So I'm going to put my lid over the top of my box. And I'm going to sit this on my table this way up. I'm going to slot my handle into place and lay that down. 
And you can see we've actually got two little deboss marks on here, which is where your stacks of little circles are going to go. So I'm going to give this a quick dry fit and just see. So these are, I'm pretty sure those are fives already. And I don't think that's going to be quite enough. No. I'm going to add one more, I think, to each of these. So just glue these. One, let's add two to be on the safe side. Let's do it. Two. Okay. So there's two extras on that one. I'm going to set that up there so I don't add two extras again to the same one. Because you know I would do that. Okay. One on that one. And then another one. Make sure they've all got the same as well. Yes. Yes. You may actually want one more on your base than on your lid, because obviously your lid sits over your base. Mm, that's true. Do I have enough to do that? Let's look. So I'm going to need two for each of them. No, I don't have quite enough to do that. So uh, do as I say, not as I do in this instance. But if you wanted to add one extra card thickness on your base, you could to allow for the fact that your base um, sits inside the lid. There you go. Lots of words. <laughs> Hopefully you uh, got the gist of that then. So with your handle in place, put your little stacks onto those deboss circles on both the base and also the lid. And this is where you do need to be very kind to your glue. Give that time to dry. So while that's happening, I'm going to put my little side panels on. So I've got two for that side, two for that side. So hopefully you can see now why I've left this last, because I want to make sure they line up nicely with the handle in place. And I think it's much easier to see that once you've got this down. So on that goes. Number one. You can tell it's always 11 because my stomach is rumbling. <laughs> we uh, tend to have a little treat at 11 o'clock. It's known as Elevenzias in the craft room. Which is a, is it a mechism? I think it is, isn't it? Or is it a, an ameliorism? I can't remember which oh, one. Oh gosh, I don't know. One of them, one of Karen's daughters. Didn't say. Oh, it's an Amelia. It's an Amelia, is it? Didn't say Elevenses quite right. It came out as Elevenses. So it has absolutely been uh, renamed in our room as well. Okay, so glue onto both of your little stacks now. And you're going to lock your handle in place with these nice big circles. And this is definitely a be kind to your glue moment because you do not want these to fall off. So make sure that everything is where it needs to be. So make sure your handle is firmly pressed into that little recess in the top and that you're happy that it is straight top and bottom. And then you can line up your circles so that you fit nice and evenly across your handle. Okay, once you're happy that they are where they are supposed to be, we can then flip everything over and repeat it on the other side. So again, I've got two stacks of my little circles. I'm just going to add two more to each one. Just to give it that little extra bit of height. There's one done. And the next one. Okay, and these can go onto those little deboss areas. 
I love that we have that on here to make sure that everything is exactly where it needs to be. There's no guesswork. It's good, isn't it? Very handy. We've thought of it. Well, Toby's thought of everything. He does. Bless him. He's got one of those kind of minds. Again, while they are drying, I'm just going to put my side panels on. My little decorative layers. I love this paper. Oh, it's beautiful. I love the colours in it. Yeah. When Mark was designing it, he asked us for some colour ideas. He wasn't quite sure what he wanted. So we uh, spent a lot of time in front of our lovely cardstock wall in the craft room, looking at things that would work nicely together. I think it was raspberry, aubergine and sea salt that were the starting point. Okay, so last couple of bits to go on then. I'm going to put glue again both onto these little stacks and then I've got my two larger circles to go on. Pop a handle into the right place again. And then you can line up your circles, making sure they're nice and even across the handle piece. Try and get them as centred as possible on those little stacks as well. You can just about feel through the mirror where that little stack is. If you choose something lighter, then oh. I've pressed that in too far now. You'll probably be able to feel that even more. So this is why kind to your glue is important. You do need to allow this time to dry. Just try not to press that too hard. There we go. Let's try that again. The important thing is to make sure that if it does fall off, that you don't have any glue that's going to stick this large circle to your handle, because then it's not going to open. <laughs> It's going to be an impossible gift box if you do that. It's going to be a very frustrating gift box. Yeah, it is. Okay, what I am going to do is I'm going to very gently pull this one up, tip it to the side, and then I'm just going to press this from inside. There we go. Just to make sure that it has definitely grabbed. And while we're here, we can just give all the others a quick press just to make sure they are also where they are meant to be. So there is my finished gift box in our, oh, I pull that all on a wonk now, bear with me. Let's pull it back to where we go. There is our lovely finished gift box in our beautiful mulberry wine panned paper, ready to go. Do be kind to your glue. Maybe it's not a 20 minute gift box, maybe it's a 30 minute gift box if you're uh, taking time to let your glue dry. But I hope that has helped you and uh, to visualize those instructions and put one together for yourself. Don't forget if you are making this, tag us in your makes. We'd love to see what you do with yours, whether you use paper, uh, what you decorate it with, what other die sets are you gonna pull out of your stash to add that extra little bit of decoration. Do show us, so either on the Tonic Studios official Facebook group, the link is in the description below, or you can tag us across social media. We are at Tonic Studios, and you can use the hashtag ShowTonic to show us what you have been making. Thank you so much for joining me, and we'll see you all again very soon. Happy crafting! Bye.